Now, having a slow, unresponsive VPN can cause issues on your Fire Stick, on your NVIDIA Shield, or really any device where that VPN is running. Now, my device, if I start IP Vanish, we can see I've already made a connection to a server in London. And let's now do a speed test with that VPN on. And we can see on my device, with the VPN activated, I'm getting around about 40, about 40, okay, so around about 35 or 40 meg, which it is actually very slow, guys. And when I first discovered this on my 4K Fire Stick Max, I really wondered why the speed was running so slow. And just to make sure that this is not a fluke or one-off, if I cancel that, run that again, just to show you that, again, we're getting between 30 and 40 meg, which again is pretty slow. And one last time, just to confirm, no oddities, no anomalies, every time on my device when running IP Vanish and then doing a speed test, my device is consistently getting, I would say between 35 and 40 meg. Well, I've now found some super easy tweaks to do on IP Vanish, which you can also apply to other VPNs. Let's now apply those tweaks and let's now do another speed test with those tweaks activated. So I'm hoping we get at least 30 or 40 meg, otherwise those tweaks did nothing. And look at that guys, so from 40 meg, we now have more than tripled our VPN speed and we're pushing over 150 meg with the VPN activated. And again, to make sure this is no fluke, no anomaly, we can see with test number two, with the VPN activated, my device is again pushing over, pushing over 120 meg, 130 meg, 140 meg. And one last time, okay, so we again nearly 160. And one last time, just to show you that how effective these tweaks are, one quick change on your device and going from about 30 to 40 meg, I'm now consistently going over, is that gonna happen? I'm consistently going over 140 meg, so 160 meg. So in this video today, let me show you these super easy tweaks that you can apply to your VPN, which will greatly improve your VPN performance. So please do take a moment to hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with all of that being said, Let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Now, before we start the video, can I just ask you to double check to make sure that you are subscribed, you have hit the bell with all notifications, and this will be the best way for you to stay up to date with all of the videos that I post on this channel which will be those supplementary videos, bonus content and live streams. So do double check to make sure you don't miss out. Thank you. So here I am on my 4K Fire Stick Max. And the reason why the device is important is the device's actual job when you activate the VPN is to encrypt your traffic, create that secure tunnel, encapsulate those data packets and send them off over to the VPN server. So you can imagine that if your device is a little bit slow, it doesn't have much CPU, doesn't have much RAM, these things will greatly affect the speeds you get. I mean, for example, me doing a speed test on my Windows 10 computer always gets the fastest speeds versus me doing a speed test on my 4K Fire Stick. Now here we can see on my 4K Fire Stick without making any changes, with my VPN active, let's see what kind of speeds I get. So we can see on this device, without making any tweaks to IP Vanish, I'm pushing around about 50, 55 meg downstream, 56 meg downstream. And let's just do one more test. And again, the reason why I'm doing more than one test is just to make sure that, just to make sure that the speeds we get are fairly consistent. And we can see in this case, between 50 and 60 meg downstream seems to be consistent on this 4K Fire Stick Max. Let's back out of that. Let me now open up IP Vanish just to show you that the VPN was connected. Now, the first thing you want to do is go over to your settings, which is the cog wheel behind my head. And let's click on that. Scroll down and where it says protocol, we can see that the default is to use UDP. Now in all of my testing across all of my devices, I found that changing this to TCP 
always yields better results. So let's do that first as the first change. Let's go down. Now also in the port, we can see by default, it is set to 443, which is the default port for SSL. Now in some cases, if ISPs do want to throttle your VPN traffic, they'll typically just look at the default port, which is 443. So we can do to mitigate that is to change to another port. So in this example, I'm going to change to 8443. Let's click on that. And I will go through some of the other options, but let's just see making those two quick changes, how that impacts my speed test. So let's press back. Let's now reconnect because you have to reconnect to apply those new changes. Give that a second. That's now connected, so I've not made any other changes. I'm just gonna press back on the remote. Let's now go back to the speed test and let's see if we can get better than 50 meg downstream. Here we go. Okay, that looks pretty bad. And there you go, guys. So literally making those two very, very small changes, we are now getting more than double speed off what I was getting before. But again, just to make sure it wasn't a fluke, let's test that again. And do we see consistently more than 50 meg? Yes, we do. So I think we can say confidently making those two quick changes to the protocol and the port, we've now easily doubled our VPN speed. And just for luck, one more time, just to make sure this is no anomaly, no one or fluke, we can see consistently making those changes, we have now easily doubled our VPN connection speed. So do give a thumbs up for that. Okay, it's working great. Let's go back. Let me show you some other tweaks you can do with IP Vanish. Now the split tunneling is a great feature. And what this means that if you are somebody that wants to keep the VPN connected at all times, but at the same time, you want to use certain applications without a VPN, this is where the split tunneling comes in because what this means is when I click on this, any application that I now select in this list will go outside the tunnel and go direct without the VPN. Now, a great example of this is maybe if you want to use a Netflix or maybe BBC iPlayer in your current region, but you'd rather use a VPN in another region, you can now tick on those applications. This now means even if my VPN is connected, Netflix will always connect direct. And also for other applications, which are a bit fussy, if you are running a VPN, you can add them to the split tunnel and that way they won't detect the VPN is running and you can still keep your VPN permanently on. So let's back out of that. Now Scramble is another feature which allows you to obfuscate your traffic. And what this means is that if you have trouble actually making a VPN connection, if you can't even establish the initial connection, you can turn this on. And this basically means that the VPN will try a little bit harder to bypass those blockages which are preventing it making the connection. Now the only thing is when you do enable Scramble, when you go to the port, we can see it only uses one port. So one of the limitations of that, it does limit which port you can use. So my device, I'm gonna leave that off. And lastly, we have allow LAN access. Now, if you are somebody that runs maybe a NAS in your house, or maybe you have a media server, like a Plex server, the minute you activate your VPN, you'll not be able to access any other resource or any other device in your home network. And that's because again, once your device is activated with that VPN, everything's now been sent through that secure tunnel. Now in my example, because I do use a NAS, which I do store all of my media, my purchased media content. If I do activate my VPN, I also need to click on this option. And this basically means that even if the VPN is on, I can still access other devices, other servers on my home network. So that's pretty much it guys. So once again, we made a couple of quick tweaks, a couple of changes. And once again, if I go back to the speed test, just to confirm one last time, making those quick changes has taken our VPN speed from about 30 or 40 meg to well over 100 meg. So that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. I really do think this is a great way for you to speed up any VPN that you're using. Double check those settings, make sure you are using the correct protocols, and this will definitely give you a VPN speed boost. So if you did find this video useful, then do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, then please do subscribe, hit the notification bell with all notifications, and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.